you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. Now, first up, we welcome Tom and Mara. Now, how do you two know each other, Tom? Uh, we're flatmates at university. We, we were in halls together in the first year, and then we've been uh, good friends ever since. And uh, where is that, Mara? At Edinburgh. At Edinburgh? Yeah. Where are you from originally, Mara? I'm from San Francisco, originally. Wow. Yeah. And came to Edinburgh? Yeah. Any, yeah. any particular reason? I went to school in London. Right. And then decided to stay. Uh, Tom, what have you been reading? Uh, I've been doing Spanish and history, so... Spanish and history? Yeah. Right you are. What are you hoping to do now you've left? Um, I quite like to go into sports journalism, but maybe something to do with travel. I really, I really like my travels, so... You, you're covering a lot of ground here, pointlessly. Well, it could just be a double bluff, you know. I might be playing the game well. No one ever got through on bluffing, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you're dreading, Mara? Um, yeah, British children's TV. <laughs> you British children? British, British children, children as well. Oh, well, they will <laughs> pop up from time to time. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Tom and Mara. It's lovely to have you here. Very, very best of luck. And next, we welcome back Liz and Jenny. You were on the show last time. Remember, everyone gets two shots at the Pontless final. This is your second and last chance to get through. Uh, Jenny, what happened last time? I behaved really badly. Yeah. I, I know nothing, nothing about American soaps. I didn't have time to watch them. This is true. It's we discovered true. last time that you, you're, you're a retired head teacher. Yeah, I was far too busy. Far, far too many things. But you things. know what my daughter said to me? What? She said, I'm not cross. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Liz, what would you like to see come up today? Um, oh, I don't know. Something a bit less to do with um, American TV, probably. It's fine for me, but obviously not for my mum. Um, Jenny, things you particularly like to see? Oh, I'd like to see some food and drink, please. Food and drink. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, Liz and Jenny, a very warm welcome back to the show. Let's see lots more of you today. Thank uh, you. Best of luck. And next, we welcome Chris and Joe. Now, how do you two know each other, Chris? Uh, through, just through uni. And, well, we went to the same college together, and then we just kept in contact through uni. Yeah. Right, John, what are you doing, Joe? What are you doing? I'm doing physics <laughs> at the moment, and, it, and it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, what are you doing, Chris, and um, how hard is it on a scale of one to five? Is five hard or is one hard? Um, no, I mean five's hard. Five's hard. I'm training to be a teacher and four. Very good. And uh, do you dress as a cabin boy when you're, when you're teaching, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes I dress like... Well, I try and dress like either you or Richard and then go along with that look. OK, well, it's a good look. It's a good look. <laughs> I, and I am wearing shorts today. Yeah, I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> Now then, uh, Chris, what do you hope is going to come up today? Um, probably, like, either history or American sitcoms. Oh, oh you <laughs> see, Jenny? He's taunting you. I know I'm on my own here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what age group do you teach, Chris? I'm training for the whole of primary, so from right. four to 11-year-olds. OK, and that's a pretty broad syllabus as yeah. well, isn't it? So the, uh, you should have a pretty good pointless grounding, I'd have thought, in, in, in all sorts of things. Hopefully. 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 Joe, obviously, the sciences are going to be good for Hopefully. you, physics in particular. Hopefully, yeah. I did chemistry at A-level as well, so I mean, some of that comes up. OK, well, it does from time to time. Well, Joe, Chris, warm welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. You. And finally, we've got Liz and Autumn. How do you two know each other? Um, we met about five or six years ago when we were both involved doing some charity work. And when that was finished, we remained good friends. Very good indeed. What are your hobbies, Liz? Um, well, I look after um, Autumn's little boy for a couple of days a week, uh, so childminding. <laughs> um, I like word games, I like walking my dogs, I love cooking and baking, so... Um, so, Autumn, how old's your boy? One and a half. So, um, children's television, yeah. children's books, yeah. these will be good. Yeah. Um, what other hobbies do you have, Autumn? Um, well, I play the flute, so sometimes I play at my local church. So, that's quite good. Very good. So, music will, yeah. be, will be good. Excellent. Well, a warm welcome to you, Liz and Autumn. Great to have you here. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show as it goes along. There's only one person left for me to introduce. If he was a transformer, he would be an Obscuratron. It's <laughs> my pointless friend. It's Richard. Oh, yeah. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Just one returning pair today. Yeah. Liz and Jenny. Didn't stick around, did they, last time? No. I imagine if one of your people said, oh, I just haven't had any time to look at chemistry, <laughs> you'd, uh, you'd have something to say about it, wouldn't you? I would. I would. Now, I have to say, I have to say round one today is a proper school subject. So you better do well. I think you will. 
I hope so. <laughs> You've just told off Jenny. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? Yeah. He's been I... waiting to do that to a head teacher for a long while, haven't you? Yeah. Did you yeah. know what I called her to my office after the show last time? <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Told her she'd let herself down and the whole show down. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Now, all our questions on Pointless have been put to 100 people before the show. In order to get through to the final round and be in with a chance of winning the jackpot, our contestants need to find the obscure answers those 100 people didn't get. So, basically, the fewer of those 100 people who knew the answer, the fewer points you'll score. Now, what everyone's trying to do, of course, is to find a pointless answer. This is an answer that none of our 100 people knew, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Charlotte Nesta won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, in this first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so try and make sure that's not you. OK, our first category for round one today is... The Periodic Table. There we are. Jenny, not particularly happy with that one either. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, our round one question concerns elements of the periodic table. Elements of the periodic table, Richard. Yeah, Zander's about to show you a picture of the periodic table with various sections highlighted. We need you to tell us the name of any of the elements in those highlighted areas, please. Very, very best of luck. Thanks very much. Uh, now then, Tom and Mara, you all drew lots before the show, and today you're going to go first. OK, so here is our image with the highlighted elements, and here they are. I'm not going to read them out. Tom. Um... I'm going to play it fairly safe and say sodium. You're going to say sodium. OK, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said sodium. Absolutely right. <laughs> 26. That feels kind of solid. 26 for sodium. Yeah, we can see it there. Na in the alkali metals. Good start, well played. There we are. OK, now then, Jenny, your time to shine. Lithium. Lithium, says Jenny. Lithium. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 said it. Lithium. Absolutely right. 50. <laughs> yeah, another alkali metal just above sodium there, Li. Just about got away with it, Jenny, I think. Just about. Uh, Chris, so we are looking for these elements on the periodic table. What are you going to go for? Um, I'm going to go potassium. Potassium, says Chris. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 said potassium. Absolutely right. 30. 30 for potassium. Yeah, well done, Chris. There is K, again, in the alkali metals. It's like a game of blockbusters so far. <laughs> Just going down the board through the letters. Uh, Liz. Liz, how is this for you? I recognise one or two. <laughs> I'm going to go for calcium. OK, you're going to say calcium. Calcium. Let's see how many of our 100 said calcium. Twenty-seven. <laughs> Twenty-seven for calcium. Yeah, there it is Ca in the alkaline earth metals. The alkaline earth metals. Yeah, they're the ones. The second line in. That's the pale blue ones there. Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea they were arranged like that. Yeah, someone has put some thought into this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I see. It's, like, it's almost like it's a table. Yeah. Yeah, if you like. Clever. It's who really knew? Clever. Who knew? I'll tell you who knew. Yeah. The person who invented the periodic table. I'll say at the end of the round. OK, end of the round. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. The best score of the pass, 26. So, Tom, you did very well there. Then up to 27, where we find Liz and Autumn. Up to 30, where we find Chris and Joe. Three scores all very close together. And then, I'm afraid, up to 50, which is quite a leap. So, Liz C, 
we're going to require a really low scoring answer from you in the next pass. We've got to hope that's going to keep you in the game. Very best of luck with that. Can we uh, come back down the line now? The second players can take their places at the podium, please. Now then, Autumn, the high scorers on 50 are Liz and Jenny. You're on 27, so a score of 22 or less will keep you in the game. So we are looking for these elements on the periodic table. OK. I think magnesium. Here is your red line. If you get below that, you avoid becoming the high scorers. Magnesium, is it right? How many people said it? Forty-six. 46 for magnesium takes your total up to 73. And we continue our grouping there. That's MG, another alkaline earth metal, discovered by Sir Humphrey Davy. Joe, the high scorers are now Autumn and Liz on 73. You're on 30, which means a score of 42 or less keeps you in the game. Now, I think we might have a really good low-scoring answer yeah, from you, I, Joe. I know a few of them. I'm going to try and keep away from, like, grouping it together, and I'm going to go for Americium. There you go. <laughs> Americium. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said Americium. Absolutely right. And you're through to round two. Very well done. Six. Six takes your total up to 36. Well done, Joe. That's a chemistry A level for you, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah number 95 there, down in the rare earth elements. It's good, isn't it? It is good. Now, Liz, crunch time. The high scorers on 73 are Autumn and Liz. You are on 50. If you can score 22 or less, you will go through to the next round. OK, so we are looking for the elements that are highlighted on this periodic table. Right. Feels slightly risky, but I'll go for it. Um, Californium. Californium, says Liz. It's a very scientific nod from further along the line, you'll be pleased to hear. Californium. If you can get below that red line, you are through to the next round. Very best of luck. Californium, is it right? How many people said it? Very well done. Yup, you're through. One! The lowest score of the round so far, Liz. That takes your total up to 51. Very, very well done indeed. Through you go to round two. Richard. Terrific answer, Liz. Very well played. Another of the rare earth elements just along from Americium there at uh, number 98. Now then, Mara. Mara, you're on 26. The high scores remain Autumn and Liz on 73. If you can score 46 or less, you're through to the next round. Yeah. You can talk us through the, through the table, if you like. I just think I'm making up words. I'm a little concerned. Um... I'm sorry if this is wrong, but I'm going to go for, um, Radon? Radon. Tom's nodding, Liz is nodding, Joe's looking askance. Radon, says Mara, there's your red line. If you get below that red line, you're through to the next round. Good luck. Let's see if Radon's right. How many people said it? Bad luck, Mara. I'm afraid that's incorrect, which means you score the maximum of 100 points, and that takes your total up to an unbeatable 126. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Mara. Radon is one of the noble gases. It's RN. You can see it's number 86 there. Uh, the RA there is radium. Radium, which would have scored you seven points, would have been a very good answer. Quite often in 100 people, you get some specialists, and they can go through all of these, like I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Joe could do. Uh, but the four pointless answers are... A holmium. That would have been a pointless answer. H-O there. Mendelevium. Uh, when you were saying who put together the periodic table, it was Dmitri Mendeleev, or he's widely regarded as putting it together. He sorted it out to all these columns and rows and all that kind of Must stuff. Must have taken him hours. Took him, yeah, it took him four and a half hours. It took him a whole afternoon. <laughs> Got it done. Yeah, that was Mendeleev. Yeah. Uh, the next one is Protactinium. That's a good name, isn't it? Protactinium. Yeah. Very well done if you said that one. And the only other pointless answer was thulium. There's thulium. Very, very well done if you've got any of those four at home. OK, thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our first round, the losing pair with their high score of 126. I'm afraid it's Mara and Tom. Very promising start there, Tom. The lowest score in the first pass. And Mara, you were just looking at RA, weren't you? I was. Oh, dear. Were there any others there that, that, that caught your eye? I was 
in between that and I thought it was beryllium, but I didn't know if I was making that one up. No, beryllium would have been fine. BE, oh, that would have scored okay. you 20 points. That would have been a brilliant answer, in fact, as it turns <laughs> out. But uh, um, anyway, listen, the good news is we see you again next time. Uh, look forward to that very much. Mara and Tom, meanwhile, thanks so much for playing. Great contestant. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, there's only going to be room for two pairs in our head-to-head -head round. So one of the pairs in front of me now will be leaving us at the end of this round. Liz and Jenny, you've done exactly what you needed to do. Very, very good. And California. I know. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> California? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris and Joe. A great performance there. You pulled it out of the bag. Um, Americium. Oh, very good indeed. Lovely low scores from both of you. Got to be looking like the favourites at this stage of the show. OK, our category for round two is... Historical figures. Historical figures. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, the question concerns... Historical Johns. <laughs> <laughs> Historical Johns. I'm really sorry Mara's not round for this. I think she'd enjoy that. Oh, yeah. yes, of course, because to her it would, it would mean old toilets. Yeah. <laughs> Historical Johns. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you 12 clues to famous figures from history who are called John or who are commonly known as John. Can you give us a nice, obscure answer? Give us an incorrect answer uh, and it will score you 100 points, though, so take care. It's going to be 12 in all across the two passes, 12 to guess at home. Good luck. OK, so here are our first six historical Johns, and we have got... Gave his name to time-travelling car in Back to the Future. Scottish pioneer of television, born 1888. Wrote Ode on a Grecian Urn. US oil magnate who co-founded Standard Oil. A love supreme saxophonist. US World War I soldier, general of the armies. Gave his name to a tank. I'll read those all one last time. Gave his name to the time-travelling car in Back to the Future. The Scottish pioneer of television, born 1888, wrote Ode on a Grecian Urn, a US oil magnate who co-founded Standard Oil, a love supreme saxophonist, and the US World War I soldier, general of the armies, who gave his name to a tank. OK, there we are, six clues to famous Johns. Now then, Liz, you're going to go first. How many of those do you think you know? Mm. Possibly two or three, maybe. How obscure uh, dare you go, do you think? I don't think I dare go very obscure. Um, I'm going to go for the Scottish pioneer of television. I think it's John Logie Baird. John Logie Baird. OK, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Well played, Liz. Fairly safe answer. John Logie Baird. We have a lot to thank him for, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, his often overlooked sidekick, Boo Boo, as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who invented the remote control. Absolutely. <laughs> Joe. I knew that one. I th well, yeah, I think I did. There's only one... <laughs> there's only one left, I know. Really, I, and it's the Back to the Future, and it was John DeLorean. John DeLorean, says Joe. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said John DeLorean. Absolutely right. 27. <laughs> Very well done indeed. Yes, John Zachary DeLorean. Uh, possibly the most famous car in movie history. Thanks very much, Richard. Uh, now then, Liz, you're the last person to have this selection of Johns, so you can talk us through them. No. <laughs> I definitely knew the Scottish one. <laughs> um, I am going to take a little bit of a guess. I'm not so sure, but I'll go with the saxophonist, and I'm going to hope that it's John or Johnny Dankworth. Johnny Dankworth. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Johnny Dankworth. No! Bad Sorry. luck, Liz. I was sure you were going to say the right one there. Um, I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which scores you the maximum of 100 points. I'm sorry, but a good guess, though. 
right instrument. <laughs> uh, yeah, jazz fan screaming at the, uh, yeah. at the TV, and that's John Coltrane. It was a love supreme, I'm afraid. John Coltrane would have scored you four points, so very well done if you said that at home. And let's go through uh, the rest of them. Uh, wrote Ode on a Grecian Urn. Keats. John Keats, absolutely right, would have scored you 11. Now, this next man down, US oil magnate who co-founded Standard Oil, I've been reading a lot about him recently. They did various calculations. They do calculations of different people's wealth at different stages of history. And there's an argument to say it's the richest man who ever lived. The richest man of all time, in any era. And he had the coolest name. He did. It was John D. Rockefeller. Two points, that would have scored you. And the, uh, the World War I soldier is a pointless answer, actually. What do you I reckon? I guess it's Sherman. I guess Sherman as well. It's wrong. Ah. It's Pershing. Pershing, so a terrific answer if you said that. John Pershing. OK, thank you. Isn't there a Pershing missile as well? Yep. Also, uh, they named some rugs after him. <laughs> <laughs> and a cat. <laughs> a cat. <laughs> well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. 27, the best score of the pass. Joe and Chris, that's yours. So, yeah, looking pretty strong at this stage. Then up to 37, where we find Liz and Jenny. Then I'm afraid it's quite a hike up to 100, where we find you, Liz, and Autumn. So, Autumn, we're going to need some brilliant answering from you on the next pass, and we're going to have to hope that's enough to keep you in the game. Best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more clues to historical Johns on the board, and here they are. We have got... Star of film westerns, nicknamed The Duke. The French Protestant reformer born in 1509. The US gangster betrayed by the woman in red. The philosopher who wrote A System of Logic. US president during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and he wrote Paradise Lost. I'll read those one last time. Star of film westerns nicknamed The Duke. French Protestant reformer born 1509. US gangster betrayed by the woman in red. The philosopher who wrote a system of logic. The US president during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And he wrote Paradise Lost. There we are. Remember, we are looking for these historical Johns. And Autumn, obviously, you're going to try and find the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. There is only one that I can sort of... I think I know. I'm going to have to say the star of the Westerns, John Wayne. John Wayne, says Autumn. You're the high scorers on 100 yeah. points. You have to hope this goes down yeah. as far as it possibly can. John Wayne, is it right? How many people said it? Mm. Ooh, high score there. That scores you 70, and it takes your total up to an unbeatable 170. Richard? Yeah, correct score, but a big score, Autumn. That, yeah. He uh, actually called himself Duke Morrison for his early films. His real name, Marion Morrison, of course. Now then, Chris. You're through to the head-to-head, -head, whatever happens. But let's see how well you can do on this board. How many of those Johns do you know? Absolutely none of them. Um, I've got John Cleese in my head. I don't think he's any of them. I don't know if there was a President John Carter, but I could just be making up names. Um, I'm going to go John Carter for the US President, but I have no idea. OK, John Carter, says Chris, for the US President during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said John Carter. No oh, bad luck, Chris. An incorrect answer. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 127, but it doesn't matter. You're through anyway. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Chris, you might be thinking of the recent film, John Carter. The big... Uh... <laughs> and there was Jimmy Carter, who was a president. But uh, all those things don't add up to a correct answer, I'm afraid. You're through, though. You're through. <laughs> Jenny, oh, you can't... are also through to the head-to-head. -head. I am much happier today. I thought you might be. <laughs> much, much happier. You can talk us through the board. You well, can fill I can't, in all I the answers. Well, I can't tell you all of them. That's John Kennedy, but I would have thought that would be a very high score, actually. I might be wrong. I'm not going for this. I'm going for the next one. It, that could be John Calvin. Might not be, though, that first one, Protestant reform. The French Protestant. But it's definitely John Milton wrote Paradise Lost, and that's what I'm going for. John Milton, says Jenny, the author of Paradise Lost. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. No red line for you either, because you're already through. Absolutely right. 
26. Very well done, Jenny. That takes your total up to 63. Richard. Yes, well played. Jenny published in 1667. Do you see the real headmistress coming out in Jenny there? Mm. Do you see she very subtly but definitely, definitely was telling Chris off for not knowing John F. Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did you I'm spot sorry. That? It was just a, just a glare. <laughs> Chris spotted it. Chris totally spotted it. Uh, I have nothing to say. You're, you'll have that skill in a few years in your classroom. <laughs> you'll be able to do that sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, uh, the US president during um, the Cuban Missile Crisis absolutely was John F. Kennedy, which scored 38 points, very low score. The French Protestant reformer, you're quite right, Jenny, is uh, John Calvin. Four points. The US gangster betrayed by the woman in red, John Dillinger. Dillinger would have scored seven points. And the philosopher who wrote A System of Logic. There's some tough ones on this board. John Stuart Mill. John Stuart Mill, absolutely right. And that's the best answer there, two points. Very well done to anyone who got all six of those. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the pair with the highest score will be leaving us. I'm afraid it's Autumn and Liz. Yes, bad luck, Johnny Dankworth. Not good. Well, yes. you know, it could have been, <laughs> as, a, as guesses go, saxophonists called John. <laughs> there you are, but no, John Coltrane, I'm sorry to say. But still, anyway, listen, we will see you again next yes. time and we'll look forward to that very much. Meanwhile, thanks so much for playing. Autumn and Liz. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Well, congratulations, Liz and Jenny, Chris and Joe. You are now only one round away from our final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. You're now going to go head-to-head, -head, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. The big news is you're now allowed to confer. So, you see, Jenny... Eventually, Pointless has given you some rounds that you can, you can show your metal. Those last two are wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good indeed. Oh, oh, and Chris. John Carter. Yeah, John Carter. <laughs> it's, it's a new film, Alexander. Uh, Joe, did you know the Kennedy answer? Yeah, I knew JFK. Yeah, was... mm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Blimey, Chris is getting it from all angles, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Hey, but uh, the good news is, from now on, Chris and Joe, you can confer as indeed can you, Liz and Jenny. So anything could happen. It's going to be very exciting. <laughs> head to head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question. And it concerns artists and their paintings. Artists and their paintings. Richard. Yeah, on this board, we're going to show you the names of five artists and one of their famous paintings, but we've missed a word off each of the paintings. Can you fill it in, please? Good luck. OK, thanks very much. Let's reveal our five artists and their paintings with missing words. And we have got... Starry Blank, Vincent van Gogh. American Blank, Grant Wood. The Blue Blank, Thomas Gainsborough. The Persistence of Blank, Salvador Dali. And The Mona Blank, Leonardo da Vinci. I'll read those all one last time. Starry Blank, Vincent van Gogh, American Blank, Grant Wood, The Blue Blank, Thomas Gainsborough, The Persistence of Blank, Salvador Dali, and The Mona Blank, Leonardo da Vinci. There we are. Five famous artists and their paintings. Now then, Liz and Jenny, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. We'll go for the blue boy, Thomas Gainsborough. The blue boy, Thomas Gainsborough, say Liz and Jenny. Chris and Joe, you can speak out loud now, if you like. Do your thinking well, out loud. Well, obviously, the... the Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, yeah. I think it's Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. The but Persistence of Time. I think, I think it is The Persistence right. of Time, cos he did a lot of clocks. Didn't he, Salvador Dali, did he? Is The Persistence of Time the one with the clock, melting the, clocks? I don't know. Wait, I think we're going to go The Persistence of Time. Yeah. Yeah. OK, the persistence of time, say Chris and Joe. The blue boy, the persistence of time. Liz and Jenny said the blue boy. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said the blue boy. It's right. 45. <laughs> 45 for the blue boy. Chris and Joe have said Salvador Dali, the persistence of time. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Bad luck, Chris and Joe. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means, Liz and Jenny, after one question, you are up 1-0. Richard. Yeah, it is the one with the melting clocks, but it's the persistence of memory. 
would have scored you three points as well. Would have been a terrific answer. Uh, these are obviously the commonly known English names of these works. And if you'd said Starry Night, it was correct and would have won you the point. So only would have scored 28, amazingly. Uh, American Gothic by Grant Wood. That's the one with the gaunt farming couple with the pitchfork. Would have scored seven points. And the bottom one, Xander. Uh, 94. I think 94 was the Mona Lisa. And it would have scored you 100 <gasps> points. Wow. We don't see that very often, do we? Wow. That's a famous have we had painting. That, we have had that, haven't we? We've had, We've had 100 score. before, yeah. There we go. Well, thank goodness you didn't say that. Um, very well done, Liz and Jenny. Now, here comes your second question. Chris and Joe, you have to win this question to stay in the game, obviously. Here it comes. It concerns... Morecambe and Wise. Morecambe and Wise. Richard. Yeah, simply five questions about the legendary comedy duo Morecambe and Wise, which is the most obscure answer. OK, let's reveal our five clues to facts about Morecambe and Wise, and here they are. We have got... Actress who played Cleopatra in a sketch, the signature tune written by Arthur Kent and Sylvia D, the name of their 1965 debut feature film, Eric Morecambe's real surname, and the conductor who appeared in their 1971 Christmas special. I'll read all of those one more time. The actress who played Cleopatra in a sketch, the signature tune written by Arthur Kent and Sylvia D, the name of their 1965 debut feature film, Eric Morecambe's real surname, and the conductor who appeared in their 1971 Christmas special. There we are. Now then, Chris and Joe, you go first this time. Do you know any of them? Not a single one. An actress who was around in the 70s. Uh, the I can't 70s. think of any actress. Barbara Windsor. No, I don't think so. Um, Eric Morecambe's real surname. Should we just go something really simple? What? John's or something. We have absolutely no idea on any of these. Um, so we're going to go with Eric Morecambe's real surname and just a very common surname. Jones. Oh, I thought you were going to say Armstrong there for a moment. <laughs> uh, now then, Liz and Jenny. You can talk us through the board if you like. Okay. I, th I think actress who played Cleopatra was Glenda Jackson, do you think? No. I, I think it was. The one who that. became an MP. That's yeah, Jackson, yeah. 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 I don't know the signature to what it's. Oh, I know what that is, yeah. Bring Me Sunshine. Uh, don't know the film, don't know his surname. The conductor was Andre Previn. Yes, they only have to I'm, be right, that's I'm, all. Yeah, we'll go for Andre Previn, I think. You're going to say Andre Previn. The conductor appeared in their 1971 Christmas special, Andre Previn. So we have from Chris and Joe, Jones. Let's see if Jones is right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said Jones. Bad luck, Chris and Joe. This means, Liz and Jenny, you merely have to be right to go through to the final. Let's see. Andre Previn, is that right? It is right. Very well done. 61 people knew it. All it had to be was correct, though. And that means, after only two questions, Liz and Jenny, you are through to the final 2-0. Very well done. Well played, Liz and Jenny. Terrific work. Uh, you have a brilliant sketch with Andre Previn. They call him Mr Preview. Let's go through the rest of the board. Liz, you're exactly right. The actress was Glenda Jackson. Would have been a good answer as well. Would have scored you 23 points. You're right about the signature tune as well. It's Bring Me Sunshine. That would have scored 48. Now, Eric Morecambe's real surname, not Jones, it's Bartholomew. Eric oh, Bartholomew. So close. Ernest Wiseman and Eric Bartholomew, so close, yeah, <laughs> quite. Uh, would have scored 13 points. Should have gone for Carter, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been good. Uh, and the name of their uh, 1965 debut feature film, do you know that? It's something about the Riviera. Like Riviera. Uh, no, that wasn't their debut feature film, it was The Intelligence Men. Ah, oh, Intelligence, Intelligence Men. Men. No. And that would have scored one point, so very well done if you said that. There we are. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, our losing pair are Chris and Joe. You did awfully well uh, in the first couple of rounds. You, uh, actually, I say awfully well. No, we had, we had John Carter. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Just keep rubbing it in. I'm, I'm not going to forget John Carter in a hurry. There no. was a Jimmy Carter. Be kind. To I know, me. I know, I know. <laughs> Do you know what, Jenny? You started all this. Oh, Come on. <laughs> uh, but listen, the great news is, Chris and Joe, you'll be back. We'll see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. Thanks so much for playing, though. Meantime, Thank great you. fun. Hang on the <laughs> but for Liz and Jenny, it's now time for our pointless final.
Congratulations, Liz and Jenny. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,000. Well, you see, you've done exactly what you had to do. I think maybe you were just warming up last time. Yes. I'll see yeah, that. that's textbook Absolutely. play. Textbook play. And then you have restored head teachers to their rightful place at the yes. top of the pointless league there, Jenny. Very, very well done indeed. Um, yeah, we put you through your paces today. Yes. Yeah, famous Johns. But that was the easy bit. <laughs> that was the easy bit. What else we had? Oh, Morecambe and Wise. Morecambe and Wise. Periodic okay. table. Yeah. Art. Yes. And a stunning 2-0 victory in the head-to-head. -head. Very, very impressive indeed. Now, listen, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. We haven't had any pointless answers on the show today. You only have to find one now, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you have five choices. Here they are. Modern theatre. American actors, heads of state, European literature, Scottish sportsmen. Well, we don't want to go for Scottish sportsmen, do we? What about heads of state? Uh, possibly. How I wouldn't go for modern theatre, I wouldn't go for American actors because it's too broad. What about European literature? It's either European literature or heads of state. Yeah. But the others are too broad. You're good on politics, but you might, aren't you? might get Frank Sinatra under American actors and then. Yeah, but you might get. <laughs> Well, OK, we'll have to go for something, won't we? So, um, heads of state. Heads of state. Well, heads of state. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Commonwealth nations that do not have Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state as they could. Richard. Yeah, simply looking for any member state of the Commonwealth of Nations that does not have Queen Elizabeth as its head of state as of May 2012, please. So any Commonwealth nation that doesn't have Queen Elizabeth as their head of state. Very, very best of luck. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £1,000 jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Um, OK, I didn't... I've never thought about this before. <laughs> I just thought she was head of something if you were Commonwealth country. Um, Australia? I think she is still the she head is head of state. state. What about Zimbabwe? Oh, she's definitely not head of state. Mm. That's a Commonwealth she? country, isn't it? What about South Africa? Is that a Commonwealth country? South Africa might be. The Caribbean certainly is. Is it? What, West Jamaica? Yeah. Jamaica? I think she might be uh, head of state there. Trinidad, Cuba. That's not correct. Cool. Yes. <laughs> Wish it was. Um, um, what else is there? What is there? Um, oh, New Zealand. Oh, she's not. A lot of African countries. Okay, so we say New Zealand, Zimbabwe, In, uh, another African country. Ten seconds left. Well, we had um, Jamaica, didn't we? Oh, Jamaica. Oh, it's Caribbean. Is Jamaica Commonwealth? Jamaica is used to be. Be. Okay, your time is up. Oh, you've gone, you've so we were looking for Commonwealth nations that do not have Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state. I now need your three answers. Okay. We'll say Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. New Zealand. New Zealand. And what was the other one? Jamaica. And Jamaica. Of those three, which do you think is your best crack at a pointless answer? Well, we're not even sure we've got the right no, thing. Probably um, um, Zimbabwe. OK, so we'll, put, we'll put Zimbabwe last. What should we put first? Your least Jamaica. likely. OK, we'll put Jamaica first and, and New Zealand Zimbabwe. in the middle. Oh, it may well not be. I don't think so. OK, let's pop those up on the board in that order. And here they are. We have got Jamaica, New Zealand, Zimbabwe. So we were looking for Commonwealth nations that don't have Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state. Jamaica was your least confident answer. You only have to find one pointless answer to win that jackpot of £1,000. So let's see how many people said Jamaica. Is it right? No. Oh. Bad luck. Jamaica, an incorrect answer. So unfortunately not a pointless answer, which means you only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. Liz, what would you do with your £1,000 prize? Um, I'd probably go out for a nice meal tonight and then I'd go shopping tomorrow and <laughs> treat myself to something. Very good. How about you, Jenny? 
Well, I'm not sure, because it's going to be 500, wouldn't it, you see, that would yeah. be mine. I think I'll have a weekend away. Lovely. Mm. Lovely. OK, well, we were looking for Commonwealth nations that don't have Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, which is New Zealand. Has to be pointless if you're going to win that jackpot of £1,000. So let's see how many people said New Zealand. Oh, bad luck. Also an incorrect answer, which means you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. Everything is now riding on Zimbabwe. We're looking for Commonwealth nations that do not have Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state. Your final answer, your most confident answer, oh, you said. Liz is most That's not saying much. <laughs> was Zimbabwe. Again, this has to be pointless if you're going to win that jackpot of £1,000. Let's see how many people said Zimbabwe. No, oh, bad luck. <laughs> bad luck. Another incorrect answer. So, unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, but you do still get to take home our pointless trophy, so very, very well done. <laughs> yes, tough category. Uh, Jamaica and New Zealand, she's still head of state in both of those oh. places, and Zimbabwe left the Commonwealth yeah, in 2003. I, should, I, knew, I knew Zimbabwe. Yeah, and as you suspected, right. it's some of the African nations and some of the Pacific nations, actually, where the pointless answers yeah. are hiding. Uh, you mentioned South Africa, that would have scored you 11 points, mm. so uh, it would have been correct, but wouldn't have won you the money. Mm. Let's take a look at some of these pointless answers, Let's see if you've got any of these at home. Some of the pointless usual suspects are in here. Dominica, Kiribati was a pointless answer. They both got uh, Presidents Lesotho, which is ruled by the King of Lesotho. That would have won you the money. Uh, Namibia, Nauru, both of those again have President Swaziland, which uh, ruled by the King of Swaziland. The Gambia, obviously in Latin Africa, the Maldives, and Vanuatu in the Pacific Ocean. All of those would have won the money. Very well done if you said any of those at home. There's some proper usual suspects there, Vanuatu, Nauru, Kiribati. Kiribati. Yeah. yeah. No Central African Republic, though. No, I only uh, said yeah. that was true. But I, I should have said Lesotho, I'm sorry. I'm... Oh, there we go. You knew a few of those. Yeah, but also you... we're, be we're being kind. We're letting the money run over, you see. <laughs> you see, there you are. Yes. Selfless to the Selfless last, Selfless to the last. <sighs> well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Liz and Jenny. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Brilliant contestants. <laughs> well, Liz and Jenny didn't win our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,000. Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>